appreciate you guys and your coverage last year for our team and our program. That really was wonderful. Our, our kids went through a lot of transition. I think the three that were up here talked about it a little bit. Uh, transition with graduation of very key players, four starters. The two players that filled that starting spot in Caitlin Duffy and Jasmine Trimboli, who we fully expected to have large impacts on our year last year, were both out for the season. Then there are players have to also work through a coaching transition, a coaching change, a new style of play. And with all of that being said, from our players to our staff, um, to our administration, to our fans, we all, I think all embrace the, the find a way mentality. So really proud of our young ladies for, for doing that. Heading into this year, since that point in time, since our season was over with the postseason, with the summer, and then now the preseason, uh, this group is really, really excited moving forward. I would just kind of describe those kids in, in three ways, the ones that we have this year. One, uh, they're a very caring group. They talked about it a little bit while they're up here. They care a great deal about each other. They care a great deal about celebrating their teammates' successes. They're really excited for their teammates. They respect each other. They love each other. And they have a great sense of chemistry because of that. You know, in practice, before practice starts, we talk about what successes have transpired since our last practice, and they'll always talk about their teammates. Very rarely will they say, hey, I did this, and I did this really well. They'll celebrate you know, Jasmine Trimboli's uh, record-setting vertical leap. They'll talk about J.C. Bradley being accepted into the nursing program, and they'll celebrate those things. We celebrate when Caitlin Duffy made her first return back in the spring and made it through an entire practice. So they're really excited for each other. They care a great, great deal. Uh, the second characteristic of this year's group is that they're a very competitive group. They get after it. During the course of practice, it's great having siblings on the team. <laughs> so when Caitlin Duffy calls a timeout in practice, Kira says, you don't have timeouts. You should see them up. And so it's very, very competitive. It's a very intense group. It's a wonderful thing to have. When you look at our non-conference schedule, you'll see that we need that. We certainly need to be a very competitive group this year. The third thing about them is that they're kind of borderline crazy. <laughs> in a good way. They have a lot of personality, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of passion. They have a lot of fun. In, in outside of practice, they have a lot of fun. You watch them dress up last night and dance and be crazy. In practice, they have a lot of fun with that too. Those moments that are competitive moments, we kind of giggle and laugh and, and our kids do a great job with that. And we're great with that as a coaching staff. If our kids work the tails off and they can smile and have some fun doing it, we're all about that. It's a good thing for our program. Heading into this season, as you look at our non-conference schedule, it's a very loaded non-conference schedule. You could argue that it could be the toughest schedule that USD women's basketball has faced in our non in our in our Division One history. Of our first six opponents, four of them have made it to the post made it to the postseason last year. Three of them in the NCAA tournament. Three of those first six opponents are Power Five opponents. Uh, and, the, and one of them is the Big East co-conference champions in Creighton. So we have our, our work cut out for us. You know, looking forward, how do we get better? What do we need to do better than we did last year? Uh, first and foremost, we need to become a much better defensive unit. Last year, the Summit League was one of the top mid major conferences in the country. And one of the major reasons why is because the, this conference really does a great job of shooting the basketball. I think there are three teams in the Summit League last year that finished in the top 21 in the country out of over close to 350 Division I institutions and three-pointers made per game. Now, we were fortunate because we were one of them, but the conference shoots the ball extremely, extremely well. So defensively, we have to get a lot better. Second thing that we need to do is we want to play. We have more depth this year. We want to play with more tempo on both ends of the court. And the third thing we want to do is just become a more efficient team. Uh, we were very, very fortunate in, in moving forward that we have the return of Jasmine Trimboli. We have a we have a fourth-year senior in Kate Liveringhouse, a fifth-year senior in Jasmine Trimboli. We have a sixth-year senior in Caitlin Duffy. I'm going to go out on a limb and say we may be the only team in the country that has that. It's a pretty unique situation. But they're doing a great job getting us ready for the season. Our kids are really, really excited to move forward. And for us now, it's just a matter of getting ready for November 10th. All right. And with that, we'll open up to questions. Was it a little bit smoother this year than knowing that you know, last year is all new and everything, and this is you know, the new system and everything? Is it things roll along a little smoother this year knowing? There's familiarity. For example, we ran, we, we ran a zone offensive set that we showed our kids one time in practice for five possessions. We practiced it five on zero. We got into a scrimmage scenario, and just to see if we could run it, we put it in, we called it out, and our new kids who had never run it in game action did it and did it really well. So there is a lot, there's, it's a lot 
more familiar, it's a lot smoother just because there's continuity. Our kids know what it looks like. Now we have to continue to get better in a lot of those areas, but yes, it's a lot easier when you don't have a whole team of freshmen because you have some kids who've been through it before and understand. John, the upside to missing Jazz and Kayla last year is getting players playing time that wouldn't have had it last year. So the depth this year has got to be so much better than what it would have been. Absolutely. 100% agree. I thought last year when when we went to Australia and we were fortunate enough to play a few games there, Jasmine Trimboli played in, played great, great basketball. And, and heading into the season, you know, when, when she went down, it was a major loss. But that's also when really Allison Arms started to do some things in practice and in games that we hadn't really seen prior to that point in time. So Allison really stepped it up. I thought J.C. Bradley, obviously we talked about her shooting percentage, but J.C. Bradley's game improved and continues to improve. You know, and, and really Kira Duffy and Matt, you know, Maddie McKeever were all kids that saw significant minutes for re still relatively very young kids, and that will definitely help us this year. <laughs> Were you saying that I got older? Is that what happened? <laughs> I didn't know if I was getting complimented or if I was getting ripped on there. I couldn't quite understand that. Uh, it, certainly, I thought what, what this group does, and it does a tremendous job of, is picking things up at a very high pace. I, I, we really, as a coaching staff, were impressed with how quickly our kids caught on to a very different style of, of an offensive system. And, and now moving forward, they challenge us as coaches to keep finding ways to make very complex ideas very simple for them. You know, and, and that's only because when they're simple and they can go out, they do it right away. Just like we talked about that out of bounds scenario, or uh, I'm sorry, talk about that zone scenario. It's not that it's a, it's, we have to require three passes in these spots. It's here are some spaces, here are some spots that we want to fill, here are some good shots go play basketball type of thing. And when it's simplified for them, they're really talented basketball players. They're really smart kids. Then they can go out and make plays. So what we try to do is really teach our kids how to play and make plays rather than how to run plays. And that's where they are just such brilliant kids. They've done a great job with that. Well, it was great for our kids who saw a lot of minutes. You know, really, you look at, if you look specifically at our, our starting guards last year, obviously, we graduated our two post kids. If you look at Allison Arms plays 10 to 12 minutes a game, and then in her sophomore year plays almost every minute of every game. If we could have played her every single second, we probably would have done that. But she needed a break once in a while. Every so often, she was in foul trouble. So you look at, she just gained such valuable game time experience. Kira Duffy, when Jasmine was healthy, was playing on the perimeter and maybe even a little bit inside. And then Kira, when Kira got, or when, when Jasmine got hurt, Kira really transitioned to be a point guard, a six-one point guard for us. So she she saw some really valuable minutes. J.C. Bradley is another kid like Allison who played 10 to 15 minutes a game her freshman year. Now her sophomore year is playing 30 some minutes a game. And Maddie McKeever, as a freshman, is playing you know 25 plus minutes a game. It's so important for us now. The interesting thing will be some of those kids will have will be playing less minutes this year. But during those fewer minutes, we hope that their efficiency is even higher and that they can play at a at a, a more com even more competitive level because they don't have to log 30 plus minutes a game. Can you tell us about some of the newcomers we might expect to see? <laughs> Right, we have one one young lady who cannot play this year, a transfer student athlete, uh, Hannah Shervin. She has some size. You won't see her. You'll see her in Coyote Hoops Madness if you're here tomorrow night, but she can't play during the regular season with transfer rules. We have four freshmen. We have our two returning seniors, who you guys have all seen already, but we have four freshmen, one of them from South Dakota, Chloe Lamb, Sully Butte's kid, 5'10 or so, very versatile kind of kid, can play the point, can play really one through four for us. And... Uh, we have another arm sister, so that's kind of fun. You guys all know how to pronounce her name around town. She's known, they're still known as the Aarons, but they're really the Arms. So Monica Arns, the third arm sister that they'll, they'll be playing for us. Just a, a lot like, a little mix, a lot like Bridget in terms of her toughness and plays in, more inside than Allison does, but also a great athlete and can shoot it. And so in that respect, a lot like Allison as well. Um, we have 
A kid out of Liv Corn Gable out of Rochester, Minnesota, about a 5'7, five, 5'8 five, guard. And the one that you're going to confuse her with because there are two kids on her roster, two freshmen that look a lot alike, <laughs> they play a lot alike. And that is Liv Corn Gable and Claudia Coons, or Claudia is out of Chicago. And I promise you, when you get them mixed up, don't feel bad because they do look a lot alike, they act alike. We have a lot of C's on our team this year. We have Claudia, Chloe, Kiera. Uh, Caitlin. So it sounds like we're stuttering a lot as coaches sometimes when you hear that happen. But there are times during the course of practices that, that we as coaches confuse Claudia and Liv too. But both dynamic guards play really, really hard, play really fast, um, pass the ball very, very well. So excited, you know, certainly moving forward because I think they're under the arms of these young ladies, under the wings of these young ladies that are here up, uh, on the sitting up here today to kind of teach them how to do things the way we want to do things here at the University of South Dakota. So they have some very good tutelage, some good leaders ahead of them. John, you sound really excited about this team. Uh, Tap third <laughs> in the conference, but what are your expectations for this team going forward? Yeah, great question. And, and for us, certainly we're more of a, a process-driven program than anything else. So that doesn't sound very good for you guys to get really big, good, great quotes and sound bites out of that. But, you know, really when we look at where we want to be as a program. Our, our goal is to continue to compete for conference championships and conference tournament championships on a on a year to year basis. So in order to prepare for that, what was really really important for us was to have an opportunity to play the best non-conference schedule that we could put together. Uh, we're fortunate we have an administration who also backed that because in order for us to get some of those games and to, to play in a tournament where we can face some great competition, it required us traveling. And unfortunately, we have to travel to Cancun at Thanksgiving. So if anyone wants to come cover that tournament, it should be a great tournament, some great competition. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to that aspect of it. Don, you talked about the league and the competitive balance last year was charts even for a league that's already good going in you found out winning on the road can be tough at times mm -hmm. and having one bad weekend can make a huge difference going into the tournament well you talked about it earlier the timing of some of those games was a little bit challenging uh, but at the same time what really that really helped us with is an understanding piece in the postseason and in the summer so we're limited, a lot more limited in postseason in the summer in terms of only having two hours a week with our young ladies from a basketball standpoint. But during that time, if we watch two or three film clips to say this is why we're practicing this, or we go on it and we're talking about a drill and we can talk about those, you know, those turn those those situations on the road. When we faced, you know, this team on the road in this environment, this is why we struggled. This is where they either sped us up or slowed us down, and this is why we're practicing it. So it really helped us have clarity of how do we get better and what do we need to do and why is that important? When our players see that, they heard that, <laughs> they're all in because they, they want that too. They want to be very good. They're a very, very competitive group. Tom, what makes JC such a dynamic shooter? <laughs> the ball goes in the basket. <laughs> a lot. No, JC is fun fundamentally, she, she does a lot of things in her shot that are really, really great. She shoots very balanced shots. Um, she she takes good shots, but her balance when she shoots, her release when she shoots are very consistent. She practices on her own. She puts in a lot of time. I mean, I think she has a lot of confidence because she does that. Now, the question that you know, when JC you know, talked at the end of the year about, man, it's going to be, <laughs> that's, a, that's impressive. How she shot the ball last year, 45.7% clip is, I mean, that's off the charts. That's, that's amazing. So the question is this year, how do you get better? What do you have to do to get better? And for her, it's sometimes a matter of can we get her more shots or different shots. Maybe it's not a full volume of shots, but shots that maybe she didn't look to take last year. For example, coming off of screens and hunting shots, getting ready to get some of those shots off quicker are some things that, that she's been working on. You mentioned uh, who's in your post players in Abigail and uh, our assistant there last year. Uh, who do you expect to fill into those roles this year and how important is it to you know, kind of figure out those spots you know, as quickly as possible? Right. I think that, that we have a, a couple of different players who are really doing a good job filling in, stepping into some of those positions right now. Kate Liveringhouse was a kid last year that didn't receive as many minutes as those seniors did. Those seniors just had really, really great campaigns. But Kate has had a great postseason, a great summer, and a great preseason. So we anticipate Kate having a very good senior year. Taylor Frederick was a kid as a freshman, kind of in the same way. Last year didn't receive as many minutes maybe as she typically would have because those two post kids had a really had really good years. So Taylor's a kid that, that again, we anticipate 
seeing a lot of game minutes. At the same time, then it allows us a little bit of flexibility. You know, we're moving some players into some positions that maybe they didn't play as much in the past. Kira Duffy now may be more in, in that scenario where she's guarding a couple of four or five kind of players and we play a little bit smaller. Jasmine's such a great athlete. She's done a good job. We've put her in some of those positions defensively, potentially. Chloe's a kid, Monica's a kid that, that have kind of filled some of those spots. But for us, we may not be as big because we lost the size, the height of, of Abigail Fogg, but we gained speed and we gained some, some depth. So for us, we say we got to be fast and we got to be feisty. So we'll have to change a little bit of some of our alignments. Now, we're really going to be tested when we play early. You know, Iowa State has some very good size that they play with, and those kids can really shoot it. Then we play Oklahoma State. You know, Creighton has size, but maybe not as big a size as some of the other power, the power five schools that we play in Iowa State, in Oklahoma State, um, and Tennessee. So simulating some of those kids in practice, we have to find a way either with our coaching staff to practice, but they don't have that kind of size. So to find some practice guys, the NCAA allows us to do that. To find some guys that can simulate the size of, of a few of those players is, is really important for us. What are some things uh, when you do play these big time programs, what are you looking for and what is the, what is the benefit here? Do they adjust to, is it that they get exposed to a, a different speed of game or different uh, physical play? Uh, how does it work and how does it help you out? I think all of those are really good points. Some of it is the speed of play. So last year when we played at Arkansas and we got pressured by some of those athletes, then when you come back and you're getting pressured by a, a different type of team, maybe it feels slower than, it, than it, it would have had you not seen that speed early on. The size, the rebounding is really, really going to be important for us in those type of scenarios. So that may be a find a way mentality because we may not box Mercedes Russell out, for example, and then go get the ball. One person's job may be just you got to keep her off the glass and then we all have to kind of battle and find a way to maybe four of us have to get involved in the action, tip it, keep it alive. So we may not go grab it off the, the rim potentially, but we may have to find a different way to finish some of those plays. So I think the, the speed of the game, the, the size of the players, and the physicality of it will be really important for us. You know, and then ultimately the goal is to put your kids in a, as competitive a setting as you can so that they can have some success so that they have some confidence walking away from those situations.